I'm Nick Katz. I teach mathematics at Princeton University. And I'm interested in number theory and algebraic geometry and have been ever since I learned that these subjects existed. I came by boat <laughs> in 1968, in June of 1968. So I had just missed the um, Evénement de May. Um, and um, it was very exciting to be here. Well, so I, I first came um, in 1968, uh, stayed for a year. And um, in, over the next 20 years, well, I think with one exception, I spent every summer here and every once every four years, I had a sabbatical and I would spend the entire year here. So in, in, in this 20 year period, um, I think something like 40% of my life was physically spent here. There are so many fond memories. Um, so my first year here was, um, turned out to be the last year that Grotendieck was fully engaged in mathematics. And um, he asked me to give some lectures in the SGA seminar. And um, a very young, one year younger than I, and that remains the case, Deline was also here. And um, he was terrifically helpful to me in um, preparing these, these lectures that I was going to give. And so this, this um, forming a close relationship with Deline in those, that very early time um, was sort of very important uh, experience. So this combination of uh, Deline and Grotendieck, both, um, so to speak, at the height of their powers, um, in the, this one year, I mean, it, it completely changed my mathematical life. The way I thought about mathematics, um, it was amazing, yeah. Grotendieck, after uh, the academic year in 1968-69, basically stopped being very mathematically active because his, um, his interest shifted to um, he founded a movement called Survivre, which was concerned with uh, problems of nuclear disarmament or the absence of, of that disarmament. And um, so Deline became the person um, for some time who was the main reason that people wanted to come here. But starting, I would say, um, around 1980 or 82, um, Ofer Gaber became the other important reason to come here. And Deline left here to go to uh, the Institute in Princeton in 1983, I think, 84. And after that, um, Ofer became, for me, the reason to, to want to come here. And so it's it's completely appropriate that there's a conference honoring him because, well, it's, he had a tremendous impact on my own work. And as we've heard from the other people giving lectures, um, um, the, far from the only person on, on whom uh, Ofer had a terrific uh, impact. So it really starts with Descartes, who, um, understood really for the first time that um, on the one hand, people had, if you like, drawn pictures of things. Um, and a completely different set of people had written down equations. And Descartes saw that the pictures were pictures of equations. And that, that's algebraic geometry, this interaction between the pictures and the equations.
IHS was founded in 1958, um, largely under the, so to speak, scientific influence of Diodene, who understood that um, Grotendieck was this tremendous talent and that he, Diodene, who was a very fine mathematician in his own right, he decided that the best thing he could do for mathematics would be to basically stop his own work and become Grotendieck's scribe, and, um, which is already a, a terrific, uh, terrifically selfless thing to have done. And he convinced uh, Mo Chan, who was the administrative founder of the institution, um, that what they had to do was uh, hire Grotendieck immediately as a permanent member. So I believe at the beginning, the two permanent members were Diodene and Grotendieck. And um, that put IHES on the map as the world center of um, algebraic geometry. And it remained that way for the 11 years that Grotendieck was both here and completely active in algebraic geometry. Well, I first met him, um, must have been 1981 or 82. Um, I actually looked um, at some old papers of mine to find the earliest one where I explicitly thank Ofergaber for telling me something. And uh, that was a paper, if, if I uh, look carefully enough, I think the earliest one was a paper that was published in 1982. And since it typically takes um, a year or a year and a half between when you write a paper and when it actually is published, uh, that, that would say that already starting in 1980 or 81, um, I was, um, that we were both here at the same time and I was already able to benefit from his tremendous insight into all sorts of aspects of mathematics. No. All, I mean, he, he's made a number of contributions. Um, the ones that have had the most impact on me, um, he gave a proof that um, for projective smooth varieties over, well, over finite fields, but projective smooth varieties over algebraically closed fields, um, the L attic, the Z L attic cohomology uh, is torsion free for all but finitely many L. That, um, it sounds like a, a very technical thing, but for lots of applications, it's, it's a very important thing to know. Um, but if you ask 100 different people the same question, what, what was the most important thing that Ofer Gaber did as it related to your own work, you get 100 different answers in almost 100 different subjects. It started um, when I was an undergraduate, and I, think I stumbled across a book in the um, library at Johns Hopkins by Segre, which had a title, something like uh, Arithmetic Questions in, in Algebraic Geometry, or I don't remember the exact title, I should have looked this up for you. but um, Already this, this concatenation of the words um, ar arithmetic and algebraic geometry. It just seemed fascinating to me. What motivated me to pursue my interest? Um, well, I, I think it's a general fact that um, people start off doing something they find interesting, and if it turns out by luck that they're good at it they and they can keep doing it they keep enjoying it um, they can be employed to do it which is sort of miraculously wonderful thing people pay you to do something you, you want to do anyway i don't know that it's it's what i'm going to say is, is special to mathematics but you've been thinking about a problem trying to s figure something out and um, when assuming that you eventually do when you do when you realize 
how it all works. Um, typically this realization, the actual realization, the awareness takes place in, in a matter of minutes or seconds. Um, of course, you've been thinking about it for a long time, but this actual realization um, is, is a tremendously powerfully pleasant experience. There, there's a famous essay by Poincaré where he talks about how he discovered the concept of automorphic functions stepping off a bus on his way to do compulsory military service. And I, I'm not comparing myself to Poincaré, but this, this experience of suddenly realizing something, it, it's very powerful. I spent the academic year 1968-69 here. That was my first year here. Um, and Luke and, um, was one of a few of Grotendieck students who I would physically see every, every Tuesday afternoon at Grotendieck's Tuesday afternoon uh, seminar. But I, I didn't really get to know him. But then, I think it was two years later, Luke spent one semester that year as a visitor at MIT. And in the course of that visit, we invited him to Princeton to give a lecture. And um, after this lecture, there was a um, dinner for the lecture where the, the attendees were um, myself, Luke, and Bill Messing. And um, it, it was a long and pleasant evening, several hours, although it certainly wasn't a restaurant worthy of several hours from a gastronomical point of view. Um, so, and that, that's when I think I would say I first really got to know Luke. And then subsequently, um, the academic year 1971-72, I was again back for the entire year. And I think it was in the course of that year that um, I met Luke's family. And um, so I've, I've, I would say I've known him well for 46 years. Mm -hmm.